In today's lesson, we will learn about how to create a SSIS project, look at the control flows, and implement a data flow package, or be the first part of a two-part series on creating the data flow package. So let's take a look at a couple of things. Let's go to SQL Server Management Studio. And when we talk about a data flow, first of all, we're going to identify our source. And the typical source that we've been using in this particular environment is the AdventureWorks DWR2 database. Also, the tool that we are going to use to implement the data flow will be Visual Studio 2010. And this has changed a little bit in a SQL Server 2012 environment, because in a 2008 environment, we would have used bids. But in 2012, we're actually going to be using SQL Server Data Tools, which effectively is Visual Studio 2010. So let me go ahead and connect to my database. And we see in our Object Explorer, this is our SQL Server instance. And in a moment now, the databases will be displayed. And then we can navigate and manipulate them through there. There we have it. So let's go to databases. And here is our AdventureWorks database. So now we're going to come over here and we are going to go to the Start menu. And we're going to go into SQL Server Data Tools. So as part of the data flow, we need to take a look at the overall structure of Visual Studio and to see everything that it provides us. And then we can go ahead and begin our data flow package. When the Visual Studio starts up, it is going to ask us to create a package. And we're going to go ahead and create a package and place it into whatever directory structure that our organization requires. The thing to remember, this effectively is a SSIS package. It is a SQL Server Integration Services package. You will need to go through the wizard to select SSIS package that is going to be of business intelligence. So what we see here is it's coming up to the start page. And we have a variety of options here. On the left-hand side, this is our toolbox. And these are the tools that we're going to use to develop. We can create a new project or open up an existing project. And over here on the right-hand side, we have our Solution Explorer. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create a brand new project. And we are going to create an integration services project that's going to be of business intelligence. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to give it a name. And we're going to call this Data Flow IS for infinite skills. Now let me go ahead and click OK. And you can see on the right hand side, it's creating this data flow project. Now I'm going to open up my Windows Explorer. And in my Windows Explorer, I'm going to navigate to that directory. And we're going to infinite skills. And if we go to projects, we can see that the directories are automatically created. If I expand on this, I can see that I'll have another directory created underneath that as well. And sure enough, we can see that the packages and projects are created. So let me go ahead and close out of this. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to increase the connection managers. On the left hand side, we have our toolbox. These are the tools that we can deploy in our SSIS package. We have our data flow task and our execute SQL task. In this particular case, we're going to learn about creating these data flow tasks. In the middle pane here, we have our design pane. On our design pane, we have our control flow tab, we have our data flow tab. We have our parameter tab if we have any. We have our event handlers as well as our overall package explorer. The package explorer identifies all of the objects within this particular package. So I'm going to come back over here to control flow. But before I do, please notice that when I change tabs, what happens over here on my SSIS toolbox? These options change. So parameters is going to be different than it is for data flow, and data flow is going to be a little bit different from control flow. Over here on our right hand side, I have my Solution Explorer. This is the overall package name. And then this is the SSIS package within this overall project. I can identify my connection managers. I can create a connection manager here, or I can create a connection manager down here. So we have our toolbox, our design pane, our Solution Explorer, and we also have our connection managers. On the bottom right hand side where it says getting started, this would also be my properties pane. So in order for me to really implement a data flow, First thing I have to do is create a connection manager. So I'm going to come over here under the Solution Explorer and do a right mouse click under Connection Managers. It's going to ask me for a new connection manager. So let's go ahead and select New Connection Manager. Now it's going to ask me, what am I connecting to and what manager do I want to use? I have things like ADO, ADO.net, Excel, File, Flat File. If I scroll down here, I have ODBC, OLDB. And in this particular case, I'm going to create a connection manager that is going to be of an ADO.net. So let me select him, go ahead and click Add. 
So now I'm going to go ahead and create a new connection manager. And this is going to be a connection manager of ADO.net. It's going to pop here in just a second. When it does come up, it's going to ask me what is the server that I want to connect to, as well as what is the database that I want to connect to. And it's also going to ask me for an authentication method. Do I want to use Windows authentication or do I want to use SQL Server authentication? In our particular case, we are going to be using Windows authentication. So sure enough, it says, okay, what is the provider that I want to use? And I can use the SQL data provider, an Oracle provider, or I can get additional .NET providers. So let's go ahead and cancel out of that. The server name is going to be localhost. Now it's going to ask me, what database do you want to connect to? And I'm going to select the drop-down box of AdventureWorks DWR2. Before you really continue, you also want to make sure you test your connection. So we're going to come over here and we're going to test our connection. We want to see that the connection has succeeded because we don't want to get farther into our package and then realize the connection manager doesn't work. So please, before you save the connection manager, make sure the connection manager is tested. So let me go ahead and click OK. And now I'm going to click OK here. Now I'm done. Now you can see down here at the project level, I have created a connection manager. Now I can have connection managers at the project level, and I can also have connection managers at the data flow level. And that's what I'm going to do now. The first thing we're going to do is that we're going to come over here to the data flow task, and we're going to make sure that we're in the control flow design tab. We can verify this by this says the design, and the control flow here is highlighted. I'm now going to just select under SSIS toolbox a data flow task. I'm just going to go ahead and bring it in. That's really all you have to do is select the object from the toolbox and drag it onto that particular page. Now, I am going to rename this data flow task, and you can do that a couple of different ways. You can either double click on it, or you can select it and do a right mouse click, and you can come down to rename or properties. So let's just go to rename, and let's just call this extract customers. So now I've created this new data flow task, and it is called extract customers. You'll notice that the extract customers is a data flow task that resides on the control flow pane. For me to actually go into the data flow, I'm going to double click. And you'll notice that it takes me to the data flow pane. So if I want to back this up a little bit, let me take a look at the control flow. So let me go over here. Under control flow, I've created a data flow task. And when I want to manipulate that data flow task, I would actually go into the data flow tab and it would identify that particular task. Now, once you're within that particular task, you have certain options over here on the toolbox of the destination assistant as well as the source assistant. So now what we can do is that we can add a source assistant onto the data flow task. We can also add a destination assistant, which effectively would extract data from our source, do some sort of manipulation, and place it into our destination. So what we've done here is that we initially created a data flow task. In the next portion, we'll actually extract and load data.